Hey, it's Chris. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit of my experimenting. So I decided I was going to play with making my own watercolors. Yeah, kind of crazy. And I've already done two of them. And um, this is the first one I did, which is a combination of colors that I've written down here. And this is the second one, and it's got a big old hole in it. And this is from overnight. And this one has been sitting for a couple of days. Actually, I have another one that I did. And it's with the... I, I tried it out first with the Prolex Luminex um, powder. And it kind of sunk down, and it's still really soft. And I did this a week ago. But this one I um, did differently, and I'm not sure I like it. So, I'm using, what I have here is a mixture of gum arabic, and I put a little bit of um, grapefruit extract, which is also similar to, the, um, to using cloves. It has uh, antibacterial properties in it. I did a little exploring before I used the clove extract to see what other scents are out there that are similar that have the similar um, antifungal and anti whatever cre um, properties and that's what I found was the grapefruit and I already had it so I thought well, well give it a try you know so that's what's in this one and then I have some the powders that I just got this week and these are the earth pigments and I have red iron oxide brown iron oxide viridian yellow black and ultramarine and this one here I made with ultramarine blue and brown iron oxide and black iron oxide. And this one I just made with two colors, which was the yellow and the red iron oxide. And I have here, just because I'm playing around and just trying this out, I thought I would go with a smaller type of pestle and mortar and so um, you can see some of the color is still in there from my last batch that I attempted which was this one here and I'm not crazy that the color stays in there I washed it and washed it and washed it and washed it like I don't know how many times and I still have the color on it and a little bit on this too but it's all right I guess it not hopefully it won't come out when I make the next color you also have another bowl on this side which is huge but I'm not making big batches I'm only gonna explore with small batches so what I've discovered so far out of just trial and error is that it takes about five scoops um, where I put my little scooper <laughs> I did, oh here it is <laughs> five of these creates a half pan with this now um, this batch here that that is still really soft a week later I used honey in this and I'm not crazy about how gushy it is and um, maybe I used too much honey but I did what the recipe said so it's to me it's a little bit too soft I don't want it soft like that so we're going to experiment a little bit to create colors to match this so far, I already have the oxide color that I wanted. And um, like I said, this, is, this has four scoops of yellow oxide, four scoops of this, and one scoop of this created this color. Okay. And to me, this is still really more orange than it is yellow which is fine. So what I'm learning is you put teeny, teeny, teeny amounts of different colors. Instead, you put a lot of one color and then a little tiny bit of the other color to make it a darker color. <laughs> Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Oh my goodness. So anyway, I want to make this really pretty green. And to get that really pretty green, it's kind of a blue-green, and um, I'm going to flip it this way. 
it's eucalyptus. So eucalyptus has this, this tiny bit of blueness in it. And so I have my green here and my blue here. And I want to soften it with maybe a tiny bit of yellow. Maybe. We'll see. So my guess is with those three colors, I am going to get this really pretty pale green in here. Um, maybe, maybe not. So I'm going to put more scoops of the yellow. Okay, now with this, uh, you can uh, wear a mask. I have a mask here. There's different respirators that you can wear. This one's kind of one I've had for a while. This is the N95. Um, this one is not, I did not use this for COVID because it's, um, for one, it's really um, old and I've used it over and over and it's probably not even effective anymore. Um, but I could use it with making my pigments here, powdered pigments, because you got to kind of mix them up. But I am um, going to be extra careful and I am not going to be too messy. If I made larger batches, I would be over maybe a little more concerned, but I'm only going to make small batches. So I'm going to add, because I know that this makes um, five scoops of this will make one um, half pan, but to get the color I want, I might have to um, change up the amounts because I do want to add. I'm going to do four of this, four scoops of yellow. That's three. So the trick is not killing it and uh, creating mud, right? It took me several tries to get this blue color, but I love it. And what I love about this one, I put three colors in it, right? You can see the brown along the edges. The brown came through and you can actually see some of the black. I used such a small amount of black on that, but it's a beautiful color. Okay, so four of those. Now, um, this is a very strong green. So I'm only gonna use one, maybe one fourth of a scoop here. And then the ultramarine blue, it's also a very vibrant color. Look at that. I am going to use about the same. There's very little color in there. Very little. So it's about a fourth scoop piece and um, I might actually add a little bit more. I'm going to add one more scoop of yellow. So that's five scoops of yellow. A quarter scoop of green and a quarter scoop of blue. So I'm going to write this down. So I have five scoops. Yellow. One fourth green. Okay, now I have a pipette. I'm just going to go in here and get a little bit of the, I'm going to probably put two, um, pull, I don't know what you call it, pull, two uh, scoops. This is a 2.0, let's see if I can get the same amount, 2.0. So that makes it uh, four. Let's see, I, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to splatter this powder anywhere. So there's that. 
and then I'm going to mix it up here and let's hope and pray the color turns out the way I want it. <laughs> I might need a little bit more of gum arabic so you can see it's really still pretty yellow <clears throat> excuse me it's a pretty yellow though so i'm going to add more green so i really want this to be more on the green side of course then once i start grinding it um, on here it's going to change color again so I'm going to add I'm going to make this one scoop all together of the green it's probably too bold but we'll see I love playing with color Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and grind this. And this takes a while to go through the process. It's kind of sticky. And it may not be the right base colors that I need to make this green. You can see it's actually turning more like a pea green, which is still a pretty green. But how am I going to get it to that color? that I want. Let's see, how am I going to get it toned down? Um, I think I'm going to still add, uh, let me let me mix it some more because this does take a while to get it all mixed in. And it changes as you keep mixing because the colors start blending better. pretty green. I do like it. I think I'm going to tone it down a fraction with some brown. So I already put a whole scoop. So I'm going to change this to one scoop. And then um, the brown, I'm going to put one fourth in here. And we just keep changing as it goes because you just don't know quite how it's going to turn out. I don't want it to be too um, flat in color. It may end up being a whole different color. <laughs> so just keep mixing it and keep mixing it. it down a little bit. Alright, I still think it needs a smidgen more of blue. It's still too um, yellow. So I'm going to add another quarter of blue. You just got to play with this to see what works the best for you. And you know, as you start adding more pigment, you're going to have, um, it's going to get, it's going to change the, the fluidity of the paint. Okay, so that's a little more. It's a little more blue. Just a small amount. So we're going to make this, we're going to end up making this one scoop of blue.
it's not going to be the perfect color. And you see it's starting to get a little more sticky. So I'm going to add a little bit more gum arabic into this. Oh, it's getting closer. It's still a little off, but it's getting closer. I'm going to add just a smidgen more of gum arabic. So this will be one more drop in there. So I have uh, one scoop and I have five. I'm just going to put drops. I don't know what else to call it. Um, I don't know the measurement on the, the pipette. heat gun. Alright, so I like the consistency of it. It feels pretty good. Okay, now to tone it down even a tiny bit more, you're going to think I'm crazy. I'm putting a quarter of a scoop of black. This is going to really change it up a lot. So, small, small amount. Oops. It's going to really darken this. But you know, I think I'm getting closer to the color I want. A little pad to put under here. I just didn't put it under yet. I can still see the pigment in here, so I'm going to keep scrubbing and scrubbing until it gets all blended and tied in. Um, <clears throat> this takes a while to get your colors nice and blended. It's actually not a bad color. Not quite as light as I would like it, but I don't have um, a lighter pigment, so I think it's close enough to the tone. It's kind of a cool color, actually. Alright, so let me get my little um, half pans. I forgot to get that. See, there's still some black on there. I want to get that oops, scooped up a little better. That is really mixed in. You can go and get your plate and all that stuff. Um, but for doing paints for yourself, I think this is the better way to go. This only cost me like 30 bucks for the pestle and mortar. And this is going to make me uh, maybe two of these. It's kind of thin. It's thinner, I think, than the last one I made even. So maybe with some luck, it will. It will um, not crack like this one. All right, so let's test it out a little bit. Oh, I forgot my water. Is 
a blop on there. It's a pretty color. You can see there's still a little black coming through on it. Oops, I was almost dipped into that. kind of a cool color, right? Not quite. It's a little more yellowy than I was hoping. But it's kind of hard to get the right colors anyways because I don't have the right pigments to make this batch of color. Hmm, that's all right. So I like the color. I'll still use it. All right, so it looks like I can get more than one um, half pan out of this. Hmm. I'm just trying to think of. Maybe I could add more blue in it and see what it does. Because it looks different when you wet it down than what it is as a solid, right? They're always like that. So it's going to look different by adding more blue in this. Alright, I'm going to be bold. I am going to be bold. I'm going to add a whole scoop. I know I'm nuts. that out. Just going to pick up some of this. <laughs> Look at that. That is more the color I was aiming for. It just needed more blue. That's pretty, but this is the color I was looking for. Still pretty, um, I don't know, maybe I still need a little tiny bit more blue in it. How funny is this, right? Alright, I'm gonna go bold, you guys. I'm doing bold and daring. 
one more scoop of blue. Can't believe I'm doing this, but I am. <laughs> Just one more little bit here that's on the number one here on the pipette. I just want to make sure this doesn't get too dried out. like this. You can see the different colors in it. But I think this might be... Sorry. Sorry, that was my head. Actually, that one might be the better one. Look at that. This is the better one. This one is even too... Uh, yeah. I like that one the best. So that one had the two scoops of blue. By adding that third scoop, it really changed the look of it. So this is the winner right here. Uh, one scoop green, two scoops of, oops, I forgot this. Five scoops yellow, one scoop green, two scoops of ultramarine blue, and a quarter scoop of brown. Oh, and I forgot I added a quarter scoop of black. This is pretty though. Well, that was a fun experiment, don't you think? put my paints on. Sorry, I keep bumping you, don't I? The paint does dry a little quick, so, um, I need to really get this scooped off the pestle or yeah. So I think what causes the variation in colors like that, you could see the different can see the different colors in here. I think that's because the um, the granules of the pigment are different sizes and they're not blended very well because I'm not blending and blending and blending 
and uh, I think that's what causes those variations but I love those variations The test is when these dry to see how well they dry if they don't crack like this one. So, but this is the color that I, I really liked. This is the winner. That's that's this one here. This is this one here. Okay, well that was fun. On to the next batch.